Guys, it's actually really hard to find the way of Jesus and to walk the way of Jesus. Most Christians have not even begun to find the way of Jesus, let alone walk it. What they have found is a church, an echo chamber, that tells them they're fine as long as they're doing what the pastor says and coming to church on Sunday morning and giving their 10%. You know, that's what they think. They've not even begun to find the way of Jesus, alone, let alone walk it. Every day I hear it, a growing cacophony of voices, all speaking one great word to the church, wake up, get right, repent. You have become self-righteous, you have become hypocritical, you have become sin-focused, you have become unkind. You have become un-Christ-like. You have become wayward. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues, for her sins have reached to heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities. People are waking up to a hyper-controlled church, a church more about money, popularity, influence, affluence, power, than the gospel of Jesus, and helping reach the lost and lift people up out of their brokenness. Pastors are more concerned with growing their church numbers, growing their budget, growing their personal prominence within a denomination or on social media than they are helping seek and save the lost. And there is a growing voice of Christians and non-Christians, both who either have left the church or who won't go to the church, who are all speaking the same message to the church. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. You are not the thing you espouse to be. Your message has become a superficial, symbolic, empty echo of the thing you claim, but you are not. The thing you claim to be, but are not. truth is the church has lost its way. It's lost the way, the way of Jesus. It's become beholden to individual leaders who are keeping it from belonging to Christ. And this is the time of reckoning. This is the time of God's reckoning for the church. This is the time. This is the time of rebuke and correction. This is the time for the church to repent, to wake up, to look at itself in the mirror, to realize it is the problem. The problem is not the world, the problem is not the darkness, the problem is not the unsaved, the unchristian who will not come to church. The problem is the church that is something people don't want to come to anymore because it's become so narrow, so sectarian, so isolated, so hypercritical, so hypocritical, so divided, so isolated, so self-righteous. People don't want 
to be a part of that because they see it for what it is. The only people that don't see it for what it is are the people still in it. They're blind. Leaders and congregants are blind to the state of the church and just how isolated it has become, not just from the world, but from Christ himself. A lot of people are waking up and there is a growing collection of voices all saying the same thing to the church. You are not the church. And you are certainly not the church I want to be a part of. The church can wake up, repent and change, or it can lose and continue to lose and not be a part of the new church and the new thing that God is doing. And that's what's before the church today. If you think you are okay as a Christian, as the church, you don't know the history of God's people, church or Judaism. You don't know. Church has never been okay. God's people have never been right. They've always been struggling to hold the line. They've always been struggling to do what God desired to keep God at the center. That's always been the case. If today you think finally we've arrived and finally we are no longer in a position where there is an elect truly following God and there are the majority who are not, you're blind. You're part of the wayward majority. If you think the church is fine, if you think you're fine. We are never fine, guys. You are never okay. You are growing to be more like Christ when you think you no longer need to grow as a Christian, as a church, then you've lost it. Then you don't know. Then you're blind. When you think you are right, and you think you are so right you can criticize everybody else, then you're the furthest from being right. Because God's people have never been perfectly beholden to God. There's always been the elect that really desired to know God and seek God. And there's always been the majority that did not. The wayward majority. And that's what we have again today. We have the wayward majority. They don't see it. They think they're fine. They think they don't need to repent. Don't need to do anything different. Everything they're doing is just swell and perfect. And God just loves it. And nothing could be further from the truth. Render to her just as she rendered to you. And repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorify herself and live luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. Torment and sorrow. Torment and sorrow. 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 Jesus said, The way is narrow, and there are few who find it. So guys, if you are part of a majority thinking you're following Jesus, you're not a part of the minority that truly are. Sometimes that minority is able to help draw the church back closer to following Christ. But the way is narrow and there are few who truly find it. And so, that's just the truth. Unless you think Jesus is a liar. Guys, it's actually really hard to find the way of Jesus and to walk the way of Jesus. Most Christians have not even begun to find the way of Jesus, let alone walk it. What they have found is a church echo chamber that tells them they're fine as long as they're doing what the pastor says and coming to church on Sunday morning and giving their 10%. You know, that's what they think. They've not even begun to find the way of Jesus, let alone, let alone walk it. And that goes for pastor as well as congregant. The way of Jesus is one thing. Coming back into relationship with the Father, not with institutions and rules and doctrines and buildings and leadership and a book but relationship with the Father. That's the way of Jesus. It's a way back to the Father. Back to oneness. How do you know you're becoming one with the Father 
as Christ was one with the Father. How do you know you're coming back into communion with the Father? Guys, when you are growing into a relationship with a person, you know because you are coming to know a person. <laughs> you are coming to hear their voice, feel their heart, recognize their presence. It is deeply intimate, deeply personal. So, are you coming to really know God? Well, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit for this very purpose. That we might learn to keep in step with the Spirit, to follow the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit. That is intimate and personal. And you know whether or not you have an intimate personal relationship with God where not only can you talk with Him, but He can talk with you. Not only can you hear Him, but you know exactly what He's saying, exactly what He wants to do, exactly what He wants you to do, and you are seeking to follow after Christ Himself as He speaks to you personally. Because Jesus said, My sheep know my voice. They will not follow the voice of a stranger. Guys, voice is not... I read some information in a book, and I'm following this information, and my pastor told me there's all these rules and principles, and I'm following those. And No. Following the voice of Jesus... It's personal. It means you actually hear Jesus' voice. And you will not follow the voice of a stranger. Guys, your pastor is a stranger because he's not Jesus. He's the hired hand. He's a stranger. Jesus is the one you follow. You know his voice. That's personal. That's intimate. That's why he gave the Spirit. Amen. Come now, you rich, weep, and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are mocked. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire, and will eat your flesh like fire, like fire, 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 fire. I have a dream, a dream of a church so different than the church that I see in front of me in the American culture today. It's a church that is small, it's a church that is made up of people that really know each other, that want to spend time together, that don't need the polished services and well crafted sermons, but that really just want to come together and get to know one another, love one another, serve one another, help one another, walk with one another. I just want to be together, to grow together, to be raw and real, to be broken, to weep together, to laugh together, to share in life together. That's my dream of church. Sometimes I feel like it's a very blurry dream, but I know what it doesn't look like. I know it doesn't look anything like the church today, but I know it does look like people that just love Jesus and love to be around other people that love Jesus. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, 
and lest you receive of her plagues, 